Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my vlogs. So today's vlog is a makes vlog and I kind of thinking of it as a bit of a bonus makes vlog because I did my September makes um, a few weeks ago and I've got some October makes planned in a couple of weeks but I actually made quite a few things in September and I thought if I put them all into one vlog it would end up being a bit too long so I thought I'd add this extra little bonus makes vlog in to share a few more um, makes that I haven't shared before on YouTube um, and yeah talk about those and they're quite autumnal there's actually one I found from the summer that I hadn't shared in a summer makes vlog because I thought oh it's really not at all summery so I'm quite looking forward to sharing that one too because I haven't worn it yet either so I was quite excited to get it out but yeah so this is a little bonus makes vlog talking about a few more autumnal makes but first of all before I get started on sharing those I thought I'd share with you what I'm wearing today so today is another fairly cool day here in the southeast of England and I've got on um, one of my favourite tops and this is um, a blouse pattern. This pattern here, it is the blouse by the Avid Seamstress and it's a really nice basic blouse pattern and I think it might have been the first blouse pattern I sewed and I kind of was drawn to it because it's quite simple so it was a good first one to try. Um, it's not got any darts, it's quite a simple kind of fairly loose fitting shape to the body. It's got this band collar um, and then it's got sort of three quarter length sleeves uh, with elasticated cuffs. So yeah, it's quite simple. It's not got the full collar or the kind of um, proper kind of, um, whatever you call them, sleeve cuff details. So, and, um, and the nice thing about the Avid Seamstress as well is that the instructions are um, really clear and they break it down loads and they have loads of little details. So yeah, you pick up quite a lot of good tips when you're sewing the Avid Seamstress patterns, I find. Um, so yeah, this is my version. Um, as you can see, there's the elasticated cuffs and the band collar. Um, and I made this one using some Liberty Tarna Lawn fabric, which is really lovely. Yeah, it's kind of got these blues and little berries. Yeah, it's a really pretty print. And I actually bought this, I think originally, um, to make something completely different. I think I was planning some sort of dress involving chambray and this fabric. But when it arrived, I thought it was so pretty that I just wanted to kind of use it on its own just to really showcase the fabric. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And I love um, Liberty Tarna Lawn. It's, I don't find it's too kind of um, crisp like some cottons. It's really soft and silky. So it's really comfy to wear as a blouse. It doesn't feel too restrictive. But I'll put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looked like. Um, I think, yeah, this pattern goes from a UK 6 to a UK 22. And I think I made the smallest size, the UK 6. Um, yeah, that's right. It says that's for bust 32 and a half, waist 25, hips 34 and a half. And that's kind of my bust measurement, but my waist and hips are slightly bigger. But because it's quite loose fitting, there's plenty of room in this size for me. And it saved me grading out. I don't think I really needed to grade out because yeah, there's still plenty of room, as you can see, just tucked into my jeans. But yeah, that's what I'm wearing today, the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. Oh, and I thought I'd mention, in case you're interested in sewing the blouse pattern, that I found um, you need quite a lot less fabric than the fabric the pattern states. So for my size, the pattern states you need, um, for 145 centimetre wide fabric, you need two metres, and actually it specifies two metres for all the sizes, from um, UK 6 to UK 22. But I've got a big note on the front of my um, pattern instruction booklet to say that I only need 1.5 metres of fabric. So... Um, yeah, I think that's worth bearing in mind that you might be able to get away with a bit less fabric than the pattern states. And for me, that's quite a big difference, I think, because you generally buy fabric in half metres. So if I can buy one and a half metres instead of two metres, that's quite a good saving. So I thought I'd just mention that in case you're interested in sewing this pattern. But now let me move on to what I have been sewing and making this month. So my first make I've got to share with you is a pattern that I made in the summer and really enjoyed sewing. And I wanted to make a more wintry or autumnal version of it. And it's this pattern here, it's the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Co. And it's a really lovely dress pattern. And like I say, I made it in the summer, first of all, using quite a summery cotton lawn that was white. And I think I talked about that version in my July makes vlog, and I'll link it down below in case you fancy checking that one out. But I really, when I made that one, I really wanted to revisit it for winter because I thought it would make a really lovely wintry dress too. Um, so I'll tell you about the pattern details, first of all. This is a dress that's packed full of loads of details. Yeah, lots of really pretty details. And it's a bit different how it's constructed, so it's quite interesting. So it's got an elastic around here at the front of the collar here to kind of ruche in the fabric. It's then got a yoke at the top and these little flutter sort of shoulders. It's got quite voluminous sleeves um, with a little ruffle at the bottom. Then it's got a cinched in waist, which is cinched in by a waist tie with a kind of channel around the waist. Then it's got slash pockets 
and it's got a um, ruffle at the bottom of the skirt too. So yeah, there are lots of ruffles and gathers and details going on on this pattern. So it's a really pretty one and definitely an interesting sew. And I do find that Friday Pattern Company instructions are really well written, so they're always enjoyable to sew. Um, in terms of fabric, it is for woven fabrics, light to medium weight woven fabrics. And the size range is really great on Friday Pattern Co. patterns too. So this one goes from extra small to 7x, which takes you from the smallest size, which is bust 32, waist 24, hips 34, up to the 7x, which is bust 60, waist 53, hips 63 inches. So yeah, really good size range. So yeah, I made my first version in a cotton lawn and I kind of adapted it to make it slightly shorter sleeves and um, yeah, a bit more lightweight for summer. But I really wanted to revisit for winter, so I wasn't really sure what fabric to use. But I had had a fabric that had been kicking around in my fabric stash since earlier in the year and I hadn't decided what to make with it and suddenly I thought actually that would be perfect for a wintry Davenport dress. And so I'll show you my version, it's this one here. And this is the fabric I used. This is a visco chalice which came from Minerva. And I bought three metres of it, um, yeah, before the summer, because I thought it was really pretty, but it was also really well priced, um, yeah, really reasonably priced. So three metres, it was definitely under £20. Um, so I thought it'd be great either for a wearable toile, or I might find something I'd like to make with it that'll be more of kind of the garment I intended. Um, so yeah, it's really lovely. Um, it's got this black base with these little sort of ditzy floral daisy print on. And um, yeah, I really love it actually. It was really nice to sew with. I think this is still in stock at Minerva actually. So I'll include a link down below in case you're interested in it. Um, but yeah, it was really nice to sew with. Having sewn the first version with a cotton lawn, which is obviously very stable, I wasn't sure if it would be more tricky to sew with this visco chalice, but actually I found it behaved really well and I enjoyed sewing with it. So yeah, that's my version. You can see the little flutter shoulder there and the elasticated bit here. And um, yeah, it's hard to see, but there's a kind of yoke there. Um, so yeah, that's my version. So for both my versions of the Davenport dress, I made the smallest size of this pattern, the extra small. Although my measurements put me at extra small for bust and then for waist and hips, I'm a small. But there's quite a lot of ease in this pattern, I find. And then you can kind of cinch in the middle um, by the waist tie. So I don't think the sizing is too critical around the waist. And there's loads of gathering with a gathered skirt around the hips. So again, I think probably the most critical size of the bust for this one. So yeah, I made the extra small. And um, I found on the cotton lawn version that felt like it came up a bit large on me, um, I guess because the fabric's a bit more stiff, but with the lovely viscose, it kind of drapes, so it didn't feel so large. But I did make a few adjustments um, for this version um, and a couple of adjustments that were different to my first version. So for this version, because it was for winter, I wanted to make a long sleeve. So yeah, there's my long sleeve. And I decided to um, just make the cuff a simple elasticated cuff, a bit like on my blouse, because I thought the ruffle at the bottom might be a little bit too much. I also decided to take in the volume of the sleeve to make it more of a narrow width, because I found, um, I often find voluminous sleeves end up wearing me. So I think I took, it might have been about five centimetres out of the volume, so quite a lot actually, to make a more narrow fit. I then also decided um, to reduce the length of this one to crop the final um, ruffle a little bit because I find this pattern comes up as kind of a midi length on me. I'm five foot six, um, so it came up below the knee and I don't really feel that comfortable wearing it below the knee. It just doesn't really feel like it suits me. See, I cropped the bottom ruffle a little bit, I think by at least a couple of inches um, to make it an above the knee style. So I'll put up a picture of me wearing it. I really like how it's turned out um, and I think it'll be perfect for autumn winter with some black tights and black boots and maybe a black cardi if it gets a bit chillier. But yeah, I really like it and I'm really pleased I found a use for this fabric because I thought it's a really pretty one and it seemed a shame for it to be sitting in my stash. It is quite a wintry one, I think, with a black base. But yeah, have I got anything else to mention? Um, so in terms of the fabric requirements for this one, I had um, three metres and I think I used about 2.5 metres of that. So it is quite a fabric hungry dress, I find, particularly because you need quite a lot of fabric for the um, ruffle at the bottom. Um, but yeah, um, I'm really pleased I did put that fabric to this use. What else to mention? It's a really fun one to sew. And um, yeah, it's got lots of um, gathering. So <laughs> if you don't enjoy gathering, this probably isn't for you. But if you don't mind a bit of gathering and you like a pattern that's a bit different with some interesting details, I would really recommend this one. And yeah, I think I'm going to wear that quite a lot. So that was my first make, the um, Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Co. The next autumn make I have to share with you is one I made using my favourite sweatshirt pattern. And if you've been watching my vlogs for a while, you'll probably know that is this pattern here, which is the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen Patterns. 
and it's a really nice and um, relaxed fit sweatshirt with loads of different variations and you can see um my pattern envelope's got a bit tatty actually because I've used it so much I think I'm going to go and sellotape this up after I finish filming and it's also really fat because I've traced out lots of different variations and I've got them all stuffed in here but yeah it's a really lovely sweatshirt pattern with yeah loads of different options that you can mix and match um, its basic shape is boxy with dropped shoulders. You can make sort of a classic sweatshirt version. There's also a kind of split level dipped hem version or a tie. And there are different necklines too. There's a funnel neckline. And there's also an option to make this kind of different cuff. It's kind of a split cuff rather than a sort of normal cuff. Um, and I've made, I think, pretty much all the options except for this split cuff because um, I just know that I'll just get it messy and I'll be dipping it in like food and all sorts. So yeah, that's not a safe cuff for me. But other than that, I've made all the options and I really love this pattern. And it's got a great size range too. Um, Mega Nielsen patterns come in two size ranges. One is from size 0 to 20 and then there's a curve range which is from size 14 to 30. So overall the measurements go from the size 0, which is bust 32, waist 24, hips 34, up to the size 30, which is bust 56, waist 48, um, hips 58. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely pattern. You can make it in kind of sweatshirting and French terry. And really, um, I've got quite a few versions now, so I didn't really need any more versions. But I saw um, this lovely fabric and I actually couldn't resist. Um, just sometimes those fabrics that just kind of call to you. So um, yeah, I made one more version and here it is. Um, using this really, really lovely um, French terry fabric with it's kind of a pale pink background with these really cool, um, I think they're oranges, but I feel like they look more like lemons lemon segments on it so yeah this is my version it's a bit wrinkly because it's been folded in a drawer um but yeah i just love 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 the fabric um and i also bought matching ribbing too so um yeah that's my version basically so this fabric is a see you at six french terry and i bought it from lamazi fabrics and see you at six french terries are really lovely they are um, on the pricey side but they're such lovely quality and i've bought a couple of them before um i made um a jarrah sweatshirt with a tie uh, in a green version and I also made a solar sweater by paper cut patterns, which has a ruffle here and a pink version of it. And I've worn those both so much and they wash really well and they're really comfy to wear. Um, so yeah, I couldn't resist this print um, and I just really like it. So I made the size zero in this pattern, which fits my bust as with the last couple of things I've talked about. But again, my waist and hips um, fell in a larger size range. But the shape of the jarra is really boxy. So I think if um, you can get away with... Um, sizing just not needing to grow between sizes really because it is so boxy and it does come across quite oversized anyway so i made a couple of adjustments to the pattern but just really basic adjustments i lengthen the sleeve slightly to fit my quite long arms and i lengthen the actual overall length of the bodice too because it is kind of a cropped length um the pattern pieces are so yeah, i just lengthened it slightly because i wanted it to be really cozy for winter so I put up a picture of me wearing it. Um, yeah, I just really love it. It's really comfy to wear. I think it goes great with a pair of jeans um, and it came together really nicely. As you can see, I did the straightforward um, sweater version. I've got the sort of twin needle stitching around the top there. It just comes together really nicely, the Dejara. Um, and I also found out um, when I was looking on the Megan Nielsen website, they have a mini Jara version, which goes from age three to 12. So I'm really tempted to get that version for my daughter. Because I love the idea of maybe making a mini version of her so we could twin. What else to mention on this one? Oh, yeah. So the fabric requirements um, for this pattern for my size, it says you need 1.1 metres of fabric. But um, I actually got one and a half metres because I got this directional print and I wanted to lengthen it slightly. And I'm glad I did because I don't think I'd have been able to squeeze out of the 1.1 metres with this directional print and with the lengthening of the bodice and arms. Um, but yeah. I just really love it. Um, I just love the fabric. I think it's really cute and a bit of fun too. That is my um, Nick and Nielsen Jarra sweatshirt. So my next make I've got to share with you that I think is going to be great for autumn. It's actually one I made in the summer, um, but I didn't include it in my summer videos, um, my summer makes videos, because I thought it didn't seem very seasonally appropriate. So I thought I'd hold off um, and then I share it now as we're getting to the weather where it will be suitable to wear it. Um, and I made it using this pattern here which is the Cayello wrap dress by Named Clothing. And it's a really nice pattern and one I've made a few times. But I really wanted a version I could wear kind of every day in winter because I made a couple of sort of summery versions with short sleeves. And I also had made a kind of um, wintry version that was kind of glittery letter print on. So perfect for going out on an evening, but not really something I'd wear in the day. So I thought I'd love to have just kind of a relaxed day dress version in my wardrobe. 
so that's what I decided to do. So yeah, this is the Kylo wrap dress. Um, I've actually got the old version of this pattern quite a while ago. Um, a new version was re released of this pattern, which had more options included, um, including a jumpsuit version and sleeves and different collar options or yeah, different ways of finishing it. But this is my older version. Um, so it's designed for um, sorry, stretch fabrics, but I think it can be made in woven fabrics too. And it's just a really cool and um, interesting construction. It sort of starts off, you kind of cut it in this sort of backward bat wing shape and then you use these ties to kind of wrap it round. So um, it's quite relaxed on the fit because you kind of wrap it round to sort of get you to fit. Um, so yeah, and it actually is one that comes together surprisingly quickly. Whenever I make one of these, I'm always surprised at how quickly it sews up. But yes, I've got the old style version, which doesn't have any sleeves added in. It's quite just as one version, really. But I got the, um, there used to be a free PDF sleeve add-on, which I downloaded. I don't think that's now available because they've re-released the pattern with the full sleeve option and jumpsuit and all the other options. So I decided to make a winter version using my pattern and the free sleeve add-on. Um, oh, I mentioned first about the sizing of this one. The sizing goes from UK 4 to UK 24. So the smallest size is bust 30, waist 24, hips 33, and then it goes up to bust 53, waist 46.5, hips 56 inches. And the fabric requirements are for a drapey but sturdy jersey. See, I wanted to make just a kind of yeah everyday version for winter. So I decided just to get um, some black jersey to make my version. And here's my version here, which doesn't really, I never think black shows up very well on the screen. And this sort of shape of dress isn't very, yeah, doesn't look very flattering on the screen either. But I got um, this fabric. It is a organic jersey, cotton jersey from Minerva. And I'll link to it down below. I hadn't tried their organic cotton jersey range before. I'd bought a different couple of other different jerseys, but I thought I'd try it. But it's a really nice jersey, actually. Um, it's fairly lightweight and it's got a bit of drape to it. Um, it's not a stiff jersey and um, it's got a decent amount of stretch too. So it was really nice for sewing up the Kyolo wrap and I think it'll be nice and comfy to wear. Um, so yeah, this is my version and I'll put a picture up so you can see me wearing it. So I actually surprised myself on this one. Um, because the dress comes in just the long pattern pieces, I cropped it off to make it slightly shorter and I wasn't sure how much to shorten the pattern pieces. So when I sewed it up, it came up a bit longer than I kind of was planning for it. But I actually quite liked it. So it's actually below the knee on me. But I actually quite liked it in this dress. So I thought what I'd do is I'd hem it at that below the knee length. And I'd try wearing it out and about and see how comfortable I felt in it. Because I've had other midi length things where I thought they looked nice. But then when I stopped wearing them out, I don't feel super comfortable in that length on me. So I thought I'd give it a go and wear it out. And then if I feel like it's a bit too long, I can always shorten it to above the knee length. But yeah. I made it below the knee length for now and I do like how it looks like that. One other adjustment I made, um, other than to add the sleeves on, was um, to add a, um, a um, what do you call it, a neckband for the um, finish here. Because my old style version of the pattern, there are two options for finishing around the neck. Um, you can either just sort of turn under the fabric and sew, which I always find stretches out and never, I never find that works very well. Or you can use um, sort of bias binding, like jersey bias binding, and use that to sort of finish the collar. And I've used that in other versions, but I thought for this version, because I wanted it to be a bit more casual and just for an everyday look, I thought an actual neckband would make it a bit more into kind of a relaxed sort of jersey top like shape. So yeah, I just kind of drafted my own neckband piece. I think I calculated the size of the um, size of the neck um, hole and then um, reduced it a little bit, I think to about 75% or something. And that went in really nicely. So that's how I finished it. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with that actually. And I'm really glad to have a sort of wintry everyday version of the Kyello in my wardrobe. What else is there to say on this one? Um, oh, in terms of sizing, I made the UK size six. Um, and that is actually slightly smaller than my measurements um, from bust, waist and hips, I think. But um, as I mentioned before, I think it's quite um, relaxed, the fit of this one, because you kind of, it's obviously quite, comes up quite large with the um, big bat wing bick, and then you just sort of tie it around. So I find the size six works quite well, and I find the placement of the darts, there are darts here um, on the bodice, and I find the placement of the darts comes out quite well on me. So yeah, it's a nice pattern where I haven't had to make too many adjustments really. But yeah, I'm really pleased with it, and I'm looking forward to wearing it. So um, yeah, I'll try it out at this kind of below the knee length and see how I get on. But it was a nice sew, and um, yeah, it feels like ages ago since I wore it, but it's going to be quite exciting getting it on because it feels like a new make still because I haven't worn it because I did make it in summer. So yeah, that is the um, Kylo Wrap dress by Named Clothing. Yeah, it's just a really nice um, jersey dress that I think has a really effective shape to it. So the next make I've got to share with you is one I made for my daughter. And it's quite an interesting story how I came to make this one, I think. <laughs> Basically, a couple of months ago, 
so over it London asked me if I'd like to do a lunchtime so for their Instagram TV channel and I was really excited and honoured to be asked because they have a really big really cool Instagram TV channel and they put up on there um, lots of different tutorials and things but every month or so they do a lunchtime so which I think is a video it's usually less than 10 minutes so I guess you can watch it and enjoy it in a lunch break from work and um, they basically sew up one of their patterns and they sort of show the process of sewing it up and talk a bit about it. And it's really, I really enjoy watching the lunchtime sew. So I was really excited to be asked to um, do one of them. And they asked me if I would do one using this pattern here, which is the strawberry sweatshirt, which is a pattern from their kids range, Poppy and Jazz. And I've made a couple of other patterns from their kids range before for my daughter. And they asked me if I'd like to try this one for my daughter. Um, they said they sent me the pattern and some fabric and I could do the lunchtime sew. And I said, yeah, I would love to do that. That'll be so much fun. So I did that and I made the pattern and I've got to share it with you now. And I'll also include below a link to the lunchtime sew in case you fancy checking it out. It was quite nerve wracking filming it, but it was so much fun too. And I was really honoured to be asked. So yeah, this is the pattern I used, the strawberry sweatshirt. It's a basic kind of um, little sweatshirt pattern for sort of stretch fabrics like jersey or French terry. And it's really quite a straightforward sew to sew up. And yeah, it goes for newborn six years and my daughter is five, so she fell in the age range nicely. Before I actually did my lunchtime sew, I decided to do a sort of twirl version, a wearable twirl, just so I could check the pattern out and make sure it fit my daughter okay and made sure I was familiar with it before I did the actual lunchtime sew. So I got out a few jersey remnants I had left over from older projects and I, my daughter chose some fabric for me to make a twirl in and she chose this fabric here, which is a really cute cotton jersey fabric. And I made um, a, um, a dress in this. It was a, um, a dress that was the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons, hacked to um, turn it into a dress with a Freya skirt from the Freya dress, also by Tilly and the Buttons. Um, and I'll include a picture up so you can see my dress. And I really like wearing that dress, actually. I really like this fabric. But I, I found I had just enough left to make this little sweatshirt of my daughter. So yeah, it's quite cute. And she thought it was a really nice fabric with the hearts on. So that was my first version I made. And I made it in the age five, um, and that came out really well for my daughter. So that was my sort of 12 verse in which she has worn. But I didn't think I have a picture of her wearing this one, unfortunately. So then I went on to make the actual version for the lunchtime sew. And here is my actual version. And I made this one using fabric provided by Sew Over It. And it's this really lovely cotton jersey that's called Party Sprinkles. And I'll link it down below because it is still available. Yeah, it's really cute pink cotton jazz with lots of sprinkles on. My daughter obviously loved it. She thought it was the cutest fabric. So that's my actual version. So yeah, it's just a straightforward collar, cuffs and bottom bands. Um, and yeah, it sewed up nicely. Just got a zigzag stitch around the front in pink there on the collar. So yeah, um, I'll put up a picture of her wearing that one because I did get pictures for that one. And she really likes it. And I think it'll be perfect just to sort of pop on over leggings and a t-shirt um, for this time of year. And then actually... I had enough fabric left over of this pink um, jersey to make her a pair of little matching leggings. So I thought I'd show you the matching leggings too. Um, and I made these leggings using a pattern I've used before, once before, and it's a free pattern. And it is the girls' leggings pattern by Love Notions. And I've just kind of printed out the pattern pieces. So I don't have actual, um, a printed out version of the actual line drawings. So I'll put the line drawings up here. It's a free pattern by Love Notions called Girls' Leggings. I'll include a link to it down below and it's a really nice um, simple leggings pattern. What's nice about it is it has two different um, options for the waistband. You can make the kind of simple elasticated waistband like I've done here but there's also like a yoga waistband um, which doesn't involve elastic which I think might be quite comfy too but I haven't tried it. Um, so yeah this is the version I made my daughter. I kind of put a little kind of heart um, print on the back so she knows which way around they go because it's quite hard to tell sometimes with leggings without the label that you get in the shop. Um, so yeah they set up really nicely. And she really likes having a little matching set. I'll put a picture up so you can see her in the matching set. Um, I think the fabric's really cool too. I did think after I've made them, I quite fancy like a pyjama set. I think that would look really cute in like a little t-shirt and shorty pyjamas maybe um, for an adult or a childhood. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. Um, I can't remember what size I made her in the leggings. I think the leggings are fairly true to size. But the one thing I have found about the leggings is the leg is quite skinny. So they do, do come up quite tight on my daughter. And she has got quite slim little legs. So um, it's worth bearing in mind if you're going to make those um, Love Notions leggings. But a great free pattern. And it has the layers function as well, which I always like. Which means when you go into Adobe Acrobat, you can just choose which size to print off. So you don't have to print off every single size in the range. Because I think the range is quite wide on this. Yeah, the Love Notions pattern goes from um, age 2 to 14. So yeah, the 14 size would be huge compared to the size 5 for my daughter. 
So it's nice just to be able to print off the size you need. But yeah, um, so I'm really pleased with how they turned out. And they were nice, fun, speedy sews. Um, that is the Strawberry Sweatshirt by Poppy and Jazz and the Love Notions Leggings. So the final make I've got to share with you in this autumn makes video is a pattern hack. And I made the pattern hack using this pattern here, which is the Ogden Cami pattern by True Bias. And I've really enjoyed having a play with this pattern this year. I've done three hacks. This is my final one. And I'm going to put this pattern aside for a bit now um, and try something else. But it's a really lovely um, camisole pattern designed for woven fabrics. It's quite a boxy shape with a deep v-neck at the front and back and then spaghetti straps. And there's quite a wide size range on this. Um, I have the size 0 to 18 version and there's also a size 14 to 30 version which has a couple of small differences. I think there are some bust starts included in slightly wider straps. But it's such a simple basic um, shape. I think it's great for hacking. And earlier in the summer I hacked it into a sort of tiered summer maxi dress. And then in my August makes, I did a hack to make it into a pinafore. And I enjoyed the pinafore hack so much, I saw some fabric and thought I'd love to reproduce it again in this fabric. And this is my second version of the pinafore hack, my this month version. And I made it in this really lovely viscose chalice fabric by Mind the Maker, which I got from Minerva. And I'll include a link down below to the fabric, like I will for all the fabrics I mentioned in the vlog that are still available. Um, so it's really lovely viscose chalice fabric. Um, I can't remember what the colour of it's called. It's basically like an almost black colour. It's a really, really, really dark grey, I guess. And then it's yarn dyed. So the colour is on um, both sides of the fabric, which is great. It's not got, it's not printed on a white base. And it's got these really cool um, large scale gold hoops on it. And I saw the fabric and thought that would make a really lovely um, wintry pinafore that I could layer up. Um, so yeah, it's really, um, I'm really pleased how it turned out. So um, for this version, um, I widened the straps slightly like I did for my first version, just because I thought slightly chunkier straps would look better for winter. I brought up the V at the back because um, I didn't want it too deep. I thought it would come down too far for a pinafore. I added in pockets and this gathered skirt. And then it's kind of fully lined bodice. So you can see inside um, I've kind of lined it and then I've um, slip stitched it in place to the skirt once it was gathered in. And I also had fun with the label on this one because I always find with Ogden Cami, it's really hard to tell which way around it goes. So I added a little label using some ribbon I had in my stash. It's kind of a sort of canvasy sort of soft ribbon and I just zigzagged around the edge of it. So um, I'm pleased with how that looks. I think it's quite cute. So yeah, this is it. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I'll put a picture of me wearing it and I've layered it in this picture with a black um, turtleneck top. So I think that looks really nice like that. And I think that's how I'm going to be styling it this winter. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, in terms of sizing, I would, if I was making the standard cami, I usually make the smallest size, the size zero, because that fits with my measurements. But because um, I wanted to use this for layering, I sized up one size um, just to give it a little bit more room. So I, it's not too tight if I put fit like a um, top underneath. And I've actually written up a blog post talking all about um, this hack. Um, and I've shown both my versions I've made in that blog post and talk about all the details of kind of how long I crop the bodice and how much I gather the skirt in and all the details of that. So I'll include a link down below in case you fancy having a look at the blog post or you think you might like to do a pinafore hack of the Ogden Cami yourself. I'm really pleased how it turned out and um, yeah I think it'll be great for winter and it's really comfy too because it's nice and loose. And this Mind the Maker Viscose Chalice was really nice to work with. Um, it didn't fray too much either for viscose. It is quite a substantial viscose. It almost feels like a viscose twill to me. It's yeah, quite substantial. So it's perfect for winter. It wouldn't, it's not a really super duper drapey one. It definitely is yeah, on the more substantial end of viscose. But yeah, I really like it. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. So it was fun to do that hack again. But as I say, I'm putting the Ogden Cami pattern away now. Um, I'll move on to some other patterns <laughs> rather than continuing to hack that one. So that was my final make I've got to share with you in this autumn makes vlog. I've really enjoyed sewing all those makes and I can't wait to get them out now the weather is getting cooler. I'm really looking forward to trying my KLO wrap dress out and seeing whether I feel comfortable with that length or whether I need to change it a bit. And I can't wait to try on my Ogden Cami pinafore with different tops and figure out different ways of styling it. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the vlog. Um, if you have a particular favourite make of the ones I've shared, I would love you to drop me a line and let me know what it is or let me know what's on your kind of sewing plans for autumn too. And if you've enjoyed the vlog as well, I'd love it if you would give me a thumbs up and um, also subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I love hearing from you and I'm really grateful for all your support for my channel. I really enjoy filming these vlogs, so it's lovely to know that people out there are watching them and enjoying them too. So thank you so much again for watching 
I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you again soon. Bye.